Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to the planning board for December 17th. Um, our first item of business is an approval not required plan for 21 South Mill Street, Equestrian Building Company. Is that applicant here? No one's here. Okay. So. Uh, very straightforward. Bob, do you mind if we put this up? Um, simple plan, lot 22A is conveying a small sliver, I think it's 170 six square feet over to lot 21. I think there may have been an error in yep. construction with the lot line. And okay. Does anybody have any questions? Um, so lot 22, I just looked at it for a little while, but it has a footprint of a building and then the verbiage says it's non-buildable. Is that just... So they're saying parcel A is non-buildable, that small sliver. They're saying they're not asking this to be a building lot. So it's not 22A, it's not 20, it's that lot there? That teeny little parcel A that the arrow's pointing to is the non. Oh. Yes, it's this oh. teeny little sliver right tiny. here is what they're asking. Tiny, tiny, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions or concerns? I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. Okay. Discussion. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just need two signatures. Two signatures. Thank you. Then we have um, the Form K lot release for Legacy Farms Road North and Franklin Road Relocation Subdivision Plan. Come right up. Explain to us your your uh, yes, design. Yes, Wendy Dell representing Legacy Farms LLC. We're here to request. We have an upcoming closing, and we had to request a signature on a Form K and a restrictive land covenant. I believe we've submitted the plans to you as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think there are any controversies or. No questions are there? For the form K, no. No, yep. Uh, very straightforward. Any questions on the form K? Would somebody like to make a motion to, to is it just to accept or to, to, do we need to vote to sign it? Yes, so okay. majority vote to, and then um, everyone will sign. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve signing the form K. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. I'm going to pass okay, it. We have the restrictive land covenant. This is required each time we do a closing, and we've attached a set of plans showing the areas that have uh, restricted land. And we do have about 115 acres in reserve because we're required to have 1.8 acres of restricted land each time we do a closing on each acre. Eventually we'll get to the full 500, but right now we have more than adequate land for this particular document. So uh, in our notes, it indicates that this is um, to be restricted land on property that is not yet developed or con constructed. Correct. So that Correct. poses a certain complicating factor for us to consider. Um, do you think that it's going to impose on anybody's ability to do what they want to do on that piece of property if we do this restriction at this time? Well, this, this is actually following the same format that we've done in the past. And basically a lot of this land is it's restored or landscaped. So once the development starts, they'll be restoring the land and landscaping the land. And it's fairly well delineated in the plan. It's not undisturbed like the larger areas that we're restricting later. 
Okay. Yes. You One won't second. be able to stockpile anything from your construction no. site on that property. No. That's not going to cause you any sort of issue? Not at all. And the public will be able to access it? Is that correct? I'm sorry? And the public will be, have access to it? Um, the plan shows there are small pieces that are private restricted and there are other pieces that are public restricted. The amount of acreage relative to, I have the plan here, the amount of land here for these closings is relatively speaking very small. It's, it's frankly very small. It might be a few acres. It's really the larger portions where we're doing 10, 20, 30, 100 acre parcels that are really the larger portions of the land. So from a town's perspective, um, what's the risk to us? It feels like it, there's a risk to the developer of the parcel versus us. Well, I, again, just had noted it from the town perspective. Obviously, the public being on that land, the minute the covenant's signed, they're welcome to go on that. They may not want to because it's an area of job site, yep. but like you had noted, that is... And we're fine with that. I mean, it's pretty much the format we've been following for the last six or seven years. Anybody else have any other questions? <clears throat> all right. There's been no issues in the, issues in the past, right? right? Say again? There's been no issues in the past. No, not at all. No, everything's worked out quite fine. So the reason, the reason for, for doing this tonight is that you want to start to develop those lots yes. where there's other pieces that fulfill the requirement that are much larger, much that larger. the public will be able to access as well. Correct. Um, and these numbers don't affect those numbers at all? Not at all. Okay. Um, at some point, would we be able to get a better vision of what those other lands look like? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Would, get, would you get a, get a better map of what those other lands look like? Oh, we'll definitely get you that. Okay. I, th I think at the next closing, we're actually going to attempt to work with the board in a lane and closing out all the numbers. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have any? I just have one more question. Sure. On the, the, the portion of the restricted land that's private restricted land? Yes. Can you just explain what that means? Well, that's interesting. That was a concept that was developed by the planning board mm, 10 years ago. And they had different categories. There was uh, agricultural, there was restored restricted, there was landscape restricted, there was public restricted. And there's a very small component, which was private restricted. And the private restricted basically was land that was restricted from development and kept as open space. It was generally speaking more for the use of the residents that are there. In other words, it could be an area tw twice the size of this room between a grouping of homes that wanted to stay as open space. It's a very, very small portion of the overall. So if it was part of a, an association of some kind, Correct. that would still be deemed as, 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 uh, as restricted land, but because it's privately owned, then it goes towards the total. Correct. The, 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 the exactly. Okay. Thank you. So um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the request. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say, oh, yeah, no, no, it's fine. <coughs> Just to note for the record that the staff recommended that they wait and come back after the major grading and earth moving operations had ceased. So, but if the applicant is willing to take that risk, well, I understand that, that yep. it's against the recommendation of staff. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to abstain. And one abstention. Two abstentions. Okay. So I'm going to pass um, the form K. Every member that did vote will sign. And then the restricted land covenant is just signed by the chairwoman. And then Roy has a My daughter will be here in five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. This is all of us. Is that right? This is that all of us. Oh. Sorry, do you want to wait until a notary comes for them to sign? Look, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Tell me what this is. Yes. <laughs> In the lab TV, I guess. <laughs> but I'll just pass it now.
Um, we have a couple of minutes. I'll entertain a um, motion on the minutes for 1119. I move to accept. Does anybody have any comments or changes? Uh, yeah. We were, we, Kobe and I were kind of looking at one, one factor that um, I just, we needed a little more, bit more time, but I'll get with Kobe about that. What's the change? Um, it's concerning, um, the, 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 num the amount of testing done for the LNG water testing that we had talked about, I think something's a little bit askew in the minutes that I wanted to verify. Okay. But I hadn't had a chance to, to really shake it down and look through the minutes again to find it. I was looking in the wrong section. So. Okay. Do you want to just wait then? Do um, you want to take a peek at it in a little? Yeah. We have yeah. a couple of minutes. Why don't we just do it? Why don't you go ahead and look at it, because we have a couple minutes before we have our hearing. And there's no, um, there's no hidden message. I brought some, uh, a little holiday gift. If you'd like to select one, it's homemade soap. I make my own soap. And I'm going to pass down to Gary, who was wearing some styling pants, I noticed on the way in. <laughs> Oh, you can. A couple of us did. You're welcome. Yep, started with them. I started with the most important people. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> well, we're just whistling happy tune until 7.45, so gives us a chance to do the minutes. I think that anything can, uh, else, maybe a, a report? I have a quick report. Nice. Uh, from the CPC, mm -hmm. the, uh, they closed out, actually they didn't quite close out the public hearing, but there was some interest in the dog park and they did vote to approve uh, $150,000 for a dog park at Fruit Street. Okay. Um, and that uh, the majority of that money is contingent upon their additional grant coming in. So I think all but the uh, a small portion of it that they're allowing them to spend ahead of time for um, uh, project uh, air engineering costs. It begs the question: How much is this dog park going to cost if it, if the CPC's portion is 150k? I think they had a 250 thousand dollar grant or something. Yeah, 250 thousand dollar. The, the, so previously on the Hughes property, they had a 250 thousand dollar grant, which they're also going to apply for again. But in order to apply for it, they have to have a certain degree of the park engineered and designed in order to apply for the grant. Okay. So that's where they're releasing a portion of the money first. Mm -hmm. uh, and one other point is that they also think that um, at least where they're looking at siting this is that the parking lot for it will also serve as overflow parking for the athletic fields with, of which there is also a need. So um, the parking lot, which I think is, to be honest, is a good chunk of the cost associated with this, will actually mm -hmm. serve two purposes. Nice. Thanks. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Anybody else really quickly? Did you find your minutes? Uh, yeah, I found where it is and I will bring it up again. I think we can bring it up again in another conversation in the next in the next go round talking about stormwater. Okay, so you don't need It'll to be further clarified tonight. I think. All right. Uh, there, there isn't so, a correction that's needed in the minutes. I, th I I believe it was it is relatively close to what I was what was there. I was just I was reading something else yeah, that needed no to happen problem. next. No problem. So did we had a motion and a second on those minutes. Okay. Um, motion. Yeah, I, we had one. So uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Awesome. Another great job, Kobe. Quick question. Yeah. Chair, on Gary's update. The location of that, is that the one off East Main Street? The dog park and the athletic field? Or where is that located? Fruit Street. Fruit Street. Fruit Street, okay. Yes, Fruit Street. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, 
We can have uh, 52 and 55 Wilson Street come forward. We have one minute and then we can start. <clears throat> so my computer tells me it's 7.45, so. I'll entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for 52 and 55 Wilson Street stormwater management permit application and an earth removal application. So All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Awesome. Okay. Catch us up. Are we? I think um, I was not here at the last meeting, but I did watch it on TV. I think the, the big question we were coming back to was a little input from the Board of Health. Is that... I know that a representative from the Board of Health is here. I don't know if we want to. Is there another <coughs> chair we can make space? Sure. <coughs> so we welcome your input on this. Well, thank you. Um, for the record, I'm John McAuliffe. I'm the director of the health department. Um, we met, um, we discussed the, the, uh, yeah. discussed the project, the and I completed a review based on um, the data that they submitted mm -hmm. and essentially agree with the findings of the town's consultant and believe that the um, the groundwater data or the stormwater data that was provided um, it meets the standards that would uh, require of our own uh, DPW and that uh, and that I don't have any concerns moving forward with the, the stormwater discharge okay Anybody I'm welcome any? for any questions oh, thank you questions for the Board of Health yep. mm -hmm. Chairman. Uh, when the analysis was done Chime in on that. Was it done after one of the recent storms? Did they test water? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yes, it was. It was um, actually kind of in the midst of a um, storm event. Okay. And, and was the sample taken out through the uh, exited? Correct. This in the area that we've walked. The sample was taken right at the outlet, yeah. so where the pipes come up and yeah. over the impoundment, that's where the sample was taken, right at that outlet. Yeah. Did you have a question, Deb? Um, would there be any wisdom to doing it a few more times, like doing it in six months, doing it in a year, um, to assure the fact that you know nothing is contaminating the water yeah. we we had discussed um, periodic periodic yes. sampling um, but, uh, yeah um, Jim Blackburn project manager for ever source um, we had suggested perhaps that maybe a condition of um, the approval of the permit would be to perform some frequency of testing for a period of a couple of years um, to be able to kind of maintain that right. documentation that, you know, it's consistent with the original okay. sample. Um, do you recommend a, a, a certain period of time of, of testing? That you know, they, they had, in their memo, they had offered a, um, you know, up to three years, and I, I, I believe that's acceptable. Um, you know, based on my understanding and my review, we have rainwater going in, and um, no other solids. You know, and if there were a problem, they'd be um, responsible to address those problems as per their stormwater prevention plan and other, you know, contingency plans that they have in place for the project. So, Amy, yes. In our memo, it says that the applicant has agreed to um, testing once a year for three years. Is there a particular time of year that we should specify? Or does it really matter? I'll say that under storm. The storm um, but I think we said March through June, you guys had suggested. Right. Under stormwater, usually you're trying to get the water 
after a certain period of time, um, but before too much rainwater has come, and you want it um, after a certain period of time of not having rain, ideally. So, um, you know, typically you're going to have a rain event sometime between that March and um, June time frame um, that would meet those criteria. But I think time of year may be less of an issue as time of season and how much rain you've had previous to that event and how much rain you had at that event. So can we make sure that's in the condition? That yep, I just okay. took a, I put a note. Did you already put it in the draft conditions? Uh, I did. did. So you did. The, the last stormwater management kind of condition. Number 10? Yep. Okay, thank you. I can't read and listen at the same time, but I can read and take notes, so that's what I was doing. I can't find it right now, but I thought there was a, a, a statement in here somewhere that if, if it did not meet standards during your testing period, that you would continue to potentially ex extend the testing. Yeah, what, yeah. Is the, what is the recourse if it, for some reason, didn't, uh, didn't pass a test? can't say that I've uh, um, considered that because in theory there's no there's there isn't anything ongoing at the property that should uh, cause a problem Correct. Um, I, I guess I would suggest that perhaps um, after the sample and the data is collected we present it to the Board of Health on the annual basis and then um, if one of the criteria were out of, I guess, spec, perhaps we perform additional sampling um, to confirm that it is not within specs. And then and I think I, we'd have to then develop some type of a course of action with consultation of the Board of Health. Right. And so my suggestion could you say something to like, uh, if uh, the criteria are out of um, the range, the acceptable range, then you put a 60 or 90 day mitigation plan in place that you uh, present back to the Board of Health and take the appropriate actions in order to remediate. At least to identify the source of the. Uh, right, yeah, yeah remediate <coughs> doesn't, I think it's it crosses to find the source of what could have possibly caused that um, threshold being. Yeah, there's still words out there. So yeah. Maybe to remediate, but you find a source, but then source, and then what actions you can take. So these are the criteria. The <coughs> Assuming that you're the source. Well, yeah, and that's that's just, I think that's yeah, the that's concern. concern. Yeah. That's the um, concern that we yeah. have. But we, because it, it, it could be that a flock of geese let, set into the impoundment the day before. Um, <clears throat> and that could throw off. So it's, and that's why I would say, I'd suggest. We, I feel like that have, would be easily identifiable, though, wouldn't it? You'd um, well, I mean, they do, if, if they're following their standard protocols and, and doing a review of pro oils and sheens and other potential sources, yep. one would, I guess, conclude that um, we're looking at, you know, is it, um, it, it would really have to be something unusual I mean to drive uh, the other parameters outside I mean we could we so some we could uh, agree to work. let me ask you if this works present the data to the Board of Health um, on the annual basis and if uh, the criteria is out of specification work with the Board of Health to formulate an action plan within 60 days that's I think we'd be yeah, yeah. we'd be amenable that's to that. All right. Quick point of reference. How does, from the town's perspective, and I guess the question is for Sean from the chair, uh, Sean and Georgia, I suppose. How do how do your departments, our departments, work together on this, on uh, an, an annual basis? How, do you, how are you alerted? How, how are you alerted? And when when I came on, you know, I was hired shortly. Well, I guess. Uh, shortly before Georgia. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to make it a plan that we're working um, regularly together um, so that we can address 
and you know head off or um, you know collaborate on different you know future development um, potential issues that may result in the development. So um, I think this is a good example. Yeah. Um, and it going forward, especially in the conditions, I think having the results given both to the planning board and the board of health would make us have to communicate anyway. But right. having that open communication and both being on the same page, I think, is what we need. And maybe Very just nice. come up with a little bit of language for, um, you know, standard language for our um, documents might be helpful. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe operationally, would there be like a. Uh, calendar notice um, and reminders for both of you that this is coming up this is coming up and for this project and other projects and so you guys both are notified both departments are notified well, uh, we, we already have uh, for the most part a system in place where you know current projects that may require board review yeah uh, so we're notified he comments and he still deliver them in paper even though right. he's about 20 feet away from right, me but right. we have that Communication. Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. So, just a question on the test results here. I didn't want to get into them in too much detail, but there's two single pages where two chemicals showed up. Uh, the first one, surfactants, and the second one, page is E. coli. I mean, is that, does anybody can speak to if that's anything we should be concerned about? Board of Health question. <laughs> So the, the the E. coli is, you know, it's something that we wrestle with with the town beach. Um, you know, it's um, we're well below um, the call. So the we're well below the coliform uh, reporting limits. Um, be it either the stricter, I think it's 126. Um, Call form units or 235, um, and again, this is, um, you know, if if by some chance there was a large number of beasts or something like that, or other animals identified in the impoundment, that would have to be taken into consideration. And then, um, as far as the surfactants, um, I mean, we don't. The surfactants were actually non-detected. Non yeah. Okay, and yeah. these non-detected. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, I thought that was the case with the E. coli, but since you were here, I wanted to ask the question, so thank you. How close are the nearest private wells, do you know? They're probably 200 or 2,000, 300 feet. Was so. it down by Kruger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on Kruger. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's probably about a quarter mile. Yeah, 1,500 to 2,000 feet yeah. at least. And so 200 to 2,000. Right, a big difference. Well, I, I, I don't venture down that end very often. So, yeah, with a with a facility that has a number of industrial uses on it, what is the protocol for protecting existing private wells? As an example, one of the one of the requirements that we have, uh, unlike many other communities, is during any property transaction we require. Um, the sampling of wells for volatile organic compounds and other um, parameters, and we use that as a check um, to make sure that um, you know, private wells haven't been impacted. So when the private properties switch hands, right? You, the private property owners have to test their wells, right? Before they, for within six months of the transaction. What what kind of protocols or responsibilities do the industrial complexes have? In that regard, well, we have a swim procedure. Does that study be? Yeah, I think that's what she's talking. It's really related to your. I, I think it's, yeah, it's our um, spill prevention and con um, control plan (SPCC) mm -hmm. plan for the site that would, um, if there's any um, spill of um, material, it would be responded to immediately. Eversource is 24/7 spill response team so any um, any potential discharge into like the soil or the ground or pavement would be addressed immediately and it goes directly to the DEP and then I'm CC'd exceeding a certain threshold would be reported immediately to the DEP 
and then it goes to the <coughs> health department and then so I have a question if I can yeah. jump on that so we know of a discharge maybe in the 90s that could was noticed near the wells would that cause concern enough to have the wells tested immediately Well, it depends on the nature of the discharge. It was the, are you referring to the to foam? The, the foam. That blew off site. That. Yeah, it followed down the stream. Yeah. It was substantially in the stream, flowing yeah. along. Yeah. Uh, so that's it was a substantial that. outfall that went into, into it was, the, well, in, it probably less than a quarter of a mile. The stream is about a quarter of To a that mile point, there wasn't a compounds. standard for no, there's no, there, for any no of those compounds. So yeah, that's but she's asking the question for present day. What what would happen in that case? That wouldn't be considered a. That's still not considered a <coughs> threshold to the MCP to the EP right. for the um, the phone. Uh, what is a reportable threshold? So. So the DEP, um, through their mass contingency plan um, regulations, has certain reportable thresholds for uh, chemicals or uh, other um, pollutants that have spilled into the environment over certain thresholds would be reported to the <coughs> DEP mandating cleanup. So for example, oil, gas, um, of that nature. Mm -hmm. So if you have a chemical or material that's spilled to the environment over that threshold, then there's um, a phone call made to DEP. And of course, there's certain um, time limits, and I'm sure right. you could expand on that. So for instance, when you know a pole is taken down, they have to uh, assess how much, was, how much fluid was in the pole, the nature of the fluid that was in the pole, and then based on that, um, there are certain response actions that go, they don't go along with that. If there was a car accident, the size of the tank, be it a saddle tank or a gasoline tank, or the the oil pan that goes, um, and the system is set up so that it's it's very much like a cookbook. You know, if this, then this response, and you move through the um, the sets of the response actions um, that are required, um, and you have to address them within the. Uh, within the regulated amount of time, and then um, the DEP reviews each step of that. Um, you, have a, you have a licensed site professional that works in accordance with the, um, the responsible party and the DEP, and, um, and then there are, a bunch of, there are a set of response protocols that are um, required for the release, and then if all of those are um, met, then the site is closed out. Um, but again, it's all, uh, it's dependent on, uh, you know, the, the types uh, and the, it's dependent on the, the chemicals and, there, you know, there are some chemicals and compounds and or products that, you know, there are no standards. There are no what? Standards. Mm. Yes. So question to the chair for the director of health. So maybe if we can just kind of recap this. Are, are you satisfied that the protocols from Eversource adequately protect uh, the public and in particular the abutters around the uh, Eversource property from a health perspective? With respect to the stormwater? Yes. yes. I mean, they're, they're, they, they, have, they have a stormwater protection plan in, plan in place. And if there are violations associated with their plan, or if there's, you know, response actions. I mean, the last response, or the last issue that, um, actually, I think I want to say that every response, uh, any, every release that I've reviewed that's in the DEP system has been addressed and closed out by Eversource, I believe. I mean, they've, they've done exactly what the DEP has dictated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a three-part question. Uh, first, is there a sewer and water service, if you know, or maybe George might know, I'll ask to both of you, 
Is the sewer water town uh, on, Cro on Kroger Street? Kroger? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. Right. So, so every every home in that neighborhood is is within fifteen hundred to two thousand feet. Is what we heard. Um, there is a home on Cedar Street uh, that is closer than that, and I'm wondering if that was. Uh, part of your consideration of that answer or, or if, if you could review uh, that location when when there's a release they the DEP does take into consideration the proximity of the release the the volume of the release the hydrologic flow um, away from the release the different soil conditions and geologic formations that are in that area and they they take all that into consideration to build um, and inform their response actions and the corrective actions that they require of the responsible party. So if the DEP thought that any of the prior releases at um, the facility warranted well testing, they would have required. Thank you. So, correct me if I'm wrong, the DEP isn't really responsible for private wells as much as, as no. the Board of Health is. Is right. that correct? That is correct. So, my question really is less about the DEP's protocol for spills on the site and our comfort from a Board of Health town perspective with a facility of that nature. It's not just Eversource, right? That whole industrial complex up there with those private wells um, relatively closely situated. So, I mean, I, I'm in regular contact with the DEP. I review all of their, their rec for permitting, their air quality permitting, um, really, you know, all of their, all of the incidents that occur on site that I feel that might have a, um, you know, an effect on our, uh, on our residents. Um, and that's... And to, to date, I haven't identified anything. And, and I mean, the DEP is providing additional information. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, like I said, we're in contact. I haven't identified anything. And so if, a, so I appreciate that. Um, so if residents did have a concern, it would be you and your department that they would bring it to. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. We're there. Okay. Uh, anybody else on the board? Yes, Katie. <coughs> Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. So my comment was about the, um, the test that they did. And um, their memo says that they did the test on the 21st of November. So I went back, um, I observed a couple of days before that, um, that a large black plastic sediment fence was erected <clears throat> around the outfall. Um, it could have been there earlier than that. I, I walked the area quite often. I never noticed a large black plastic sediment fence, but I noticed it on the 18th, which is a couple of days before they did their testing. So um, it's the kind of fence you would see around construction. It's got the stakes. I mean, what I could tell from, obviously they'll have to confirm it, what I could tell from the fence where I observed it and photographed it. But it was a large black plastic sediment fence designed, I would think, to prevent <clears throat> sediment from traveling, you know, through an outfall. So um, my question is, um, why is it there? And, and I would think this would invalidate the sample they took um, if there's a concern about, well, I mean, I know that there's a lot of sediment that comes through that outfall because the, the, you know, the whole area up and down Rafferty Road is very cloudy and disturbed and eroded and all that. But um, I don't know, maybe that was a reason why they put the fence up. But um, so... 
if if the fence is there i guess is it going to be there forever is it permanent doesn't look like a permanent structure but the fact that it's there and it was there when they did their sample means that it wasn't the sample wasn't taken under true conditions that you know and what we talked about with this release before it was a deluge release which it kind of it's hard to even imagine the amount of a deluge release it's it's huge but the, um, the the sediment or whatever the and other things that come from the basin for whatever reason that there's there's been an effort to prevent sediment from going through there so I guess I would like them to answer for why should we take their test as valid when they've got this big fence and just another example of not being straightforward with <laughs> Okay. What's you know you got to walk past it every day to see what. All right, see what's thank going you. That's, on. A, that's a good question to ask. Uh, I have a question for Katie. I'm sorry, Katie. Um, did you take a photograph so we could? Yes. Is it sent to Georgia? Sure. You, you have it, but you can. Yeah, I, ha I have, and I, I get oh. a lot of photographs, and I have not organized my, uh, <laughs> and you know I have a lot of photographs of the. Uh, the road, Rafferty Road, where it's been, I mean, the volume that apparent additional impervious area is like four acres that's being added onto this. And the calculations, math comes out somehow that there's no additional water going down Rafferty Road. But, <clears throat> but, but specifically if, for the. You look at the water going down there, it's, it's eroding the roadbed. And um, so I have a lot of those pictures. I, I've, have yet to organize them and kind of figure out what. But specifically about the the, the black uh, fencing you were mentioning, that would be useful to, to see. Uh, yeah, like I said, and, and I would like them to confirm, you know, what it is and, and, you know, if it's permanent and why is it, you know. I'm surprised I never noticed it before, but, you know, the, I did have the date on the photograph for that. And uh, Okay, we'll ask. Thank you. Thank you. I presume you heard the question. So there is black silt fence throughout the facility because there are a number of different projects taking place. Uh, presuming that the silt fence that she described is in the containment, because as far as I'm aware that's the most <coughs> there is silt fence within the containment currently and it has been there since sometime early in the summer when we started a lot of the other work at the facility um, so there is some and I don't know specifically um, where she's talking about but there is some in front of the outfall or the in front of the area in which the pumps I guess would suck up the water to discharge over um, the containment um, uh, however, I don't know if any of the th items that we sampled for would have that would have any bearing on any of that. Um, but that's certainly not something that we put up prior to taking samples for the, for this. Um, and then regarding um, the facility discharging water that's full of silt and other products, I think when you did your site walk down with those, I think it was probably viewed that the discharge is fairly clear and there is plenty of runoff that comes down off of Wilson Street on the outside of the containment and filters around and meets with the area in which we are pumping into um, so certainly not all the water going down Rafferty Road is from the facility and probably in fact a big portion of it is not um, and, and a much uh, additional portion of it comes right down directly Rafferty Road and, and meets with that so um, I struggle with there being any bearing on the silt fence that's been in there since the beginning of the summer. And I, I guess if that was a condition, we could maintain silt fence there at all times. But I, I don't know how that really has any bearing on the water samples that we took as part of this. Yeah. Um, so a silt fence is uh, capable of, of, of holding in large particulate matter. Is that correct? Yes. And if I may ask the Board of Health, um, the testing that was done um, in the report that we were discussing this evening 
um, is that large particulate matter or is it a much smaller matter that would not be held back by a safe fence? I mean, it, depending on the size and the construction, it would vary depending on the size and structure of the silt fence. But the silt fence is there to be, to limit the discharge. So yep. it's I'm just asking, are the pollutants microscopic chemicals or are they large particulates? It, it, they're, they'd be soil, not chemicals. Okay. Because there, there really isn't anything that's being generated on site. It's we, you know, there's a containment on site within right. the tanks. You have a limited amount of truck traffic that goes in. So the what's going into the impoundment, for all intents and purposes, is is storm is is rain precipitation, mm -hmm. and then any sediment that might get blown in, any leaf litter, and any uh, you know any droppings or anything that might get deposited there for you know waterfowl, birds, any any other animals. So it's not like it's not like any other industrial facility that we have in town. Um, and I mean, if they were putting in silt fencing in the and around the impoundment, that's part of their, that would be part of their site development plan and consistent with what I think you guys have already in, like got in place for the upcoming <coughs> development. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say that it's got anything to do with anything nefarious or anything related to the sampling. It's part of the standard operating procedures for uh, any site development. Um, so I, any other questions uh, for the Board of Health? Uh, I do I recognize that we're running into um, an 8.15 appointment time. I can I invite you guys to stay and we can come, we can leave the hearing open and we'll go, we'll move to the 815 and come back. But I, I do have one question sure. and it's kind of quick. So if there's an observed overflow of large quantities of water coming from an old pipe and it's creating flooding and sort of a, a wetland and it could potentially breed mosquitoes, it could leach, it could bring oily, slick water from the road, maybe not from the facility, <coughs> down through a <coughs> river. It could soak through the earth, so it's obviously above the water table, um, or becomes the water table. Um, what types of things can the Board of Health do to <coughs> help um, create a better environment for the public and against breeding mosquitoes. <clears throat> and is that a board health charge? You could contact, if there were open water bodies that you identified or any resident identified, um, we, we were in the midst of an unusually um, heavy, you know, period of rainfall or precipitation. Um, so if there's a concern because there's an open water body, I can communicate that to the mosquito control project, and we can have that um, looked at and you know mitigation taking place um, through the, uh, the mosquito control project. That's you know they're charged to help alleviate or address any mosquito concerns that we might have. So if it's coming from a private property, or in this case a public works, how does that? Do you work with the landowner to? develop better methods of containment or discharge? We, we would work with and through conservation and other agencies depending on where the water's coming from, where it's being discharged to. So anybody from the public could go to Mosquito Control or to the Board you of could, Health? You could call us or the Mosquito Control Project. To address such things, I'm going to add a comment on to that for the chair. Uh, Sean in his in his office has been very proactive. Uh, he's really taken the reins on and 
Uh, appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Um, so, what is the board's pleasure on um, scheduling? We have it's not a it's not necessarily a hearing, but we have a, a slotted appointment time for the Hayden Woods Davenport Village, which I think some members of the public are here for. You're welcome to stay. I presume you'd like to continue tonight? Okay. Anything? Okay, so I'll, I'll invite uh, the Davenport, the Hayden Woods Davenport Village folks forward. If you could, <coughs> excuse me, introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, my name is John Parsons. To my left is Victor Galvarni, and to my far left is Joe Marconon, engineer for the project. Good evening. Good evening. Just walk us through the public, through what it is you'd like. Sure. So we, um, I had written a letter to the board, which I submitted mm -hmm. to uh, Georgia. So um, I guess we are here for two things, one being uh, two modifications uh, to the approved site plan um, that we have and um, a partial release for the bond at the project. Um, and I think, does everybody have a copy of the letter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> So they were for the acceptance of the three pole mounted lights. We submitted a uh, photometric plan to you folks uh, to take a look at that. Um, that was submitted along with the uh, landscape plan, a uh, certification from our landscape architect um, regarding that the plan was uh, designed as built. And then um, the, call it the reconstruction of Basin 50. Um, to exceed uh, or comply its original design capacity. Uh, all of those things have been done. They were reviewed and certified uh, by Mark. Um, and that's sort of where those pieces of the project stand now. Okay. It, uh, yeah, in the sidewalk, we submitted a letter uh, from Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, that's correct. Yep. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Because I. He had asked about the. He listed the modifications that they're proposing. He had mentioned the, the lighting, which is mm -hmm. the big one, the three added light poles. Uh, yep. The basin was resized, not that the board needs to approve that because it's above the standard and the storage amount, uh, but the impervious sidewalks. Mm -hmm. The board had approved porous sidewalks, but the developer had installed impervious sidewalks, so that is the modification that they are requesting. I'm sorry, that sounds different when you say it out loud. And um, maybe I missed part of it when I was reading it. And then I'm remembering previous sidewalks were approved with the previous developer, but that was not what was installed? No, so they installed impervious sidewalks. But didn't we already talk about that in the previously? We did, but the board Correct. never approved the modification. So they, you got, the last board said either fix the sidewalks and the lighting or come back to request the modification. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Um, so for the for the lighting, are are those dark sky compliant? And what the height is? The height is not fifteen feet, right? It's taller. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he lists the height on the photometric plan. On the plan, it says twenty one point eight inches high. Eight? No, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. No. But that's what it says on the plans. Yeah. <laughs> In the beta report, it's got an eight foot height. Yeah, that sounds all right. right. Yeah. There's two at the um, right by the bridge area, and then one up by the front. As you pull in, like where the culvert was installed. So, have you found the height on your plans? Eight feet. Eight. And, and are they dark sky compliant? 
You know, Bowl, uh, Bowler did it. I don't know if they've. I don't know if they put it on the plan or not. I don't know if they've. I, I don't know if they are. There, I mean, these lights are. Does it have a cover top? A cover top on it. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah. They are. They have cover tops on. Them. They have a dark black. Yeah, top on. Them. Correct. Yeah. Just in the picture, it looks like a clear top. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of black. But but these are the, the lights that are shown up there are the ones that were installed. It's, I that's know, correct. Yeah, that's correct. But the, the saying that looks like it's a clear top on there. It does look like a clear top. Um, there's a picture on page 121. Go to the Lowe's website. 121. Shows oh, with the page numbers. Oh, no. They have like a crown on. It. Yeah. It has a little bit of a cap. Yeah, cap. They have like a cap, oh. little decorative piece on the top of them. So um, one thing I couldn't understand between going with the landscape architect's plans and then the lighting plans were the trees as installed as per the landscape architect's plans or they're going to be installed as per the landscape architect's plans because I, I didn't see them meshing so well between the two plans. I don't know that um, even the beta really pointed out anything additional when it came to landscape plan. We uh, had a certified letter from Steve Cosmos who went out and reviewed the plannings um, pursuant to the, you know, the plan that we submitted. And I will note at the last bond request hearing you guys had back in January, those minutes that I had put in the packet, uh, Beta had noted that the landscaping was installed as approved by the plan. Right. What happened was there, the incorrect plan was originally installed when we modified the plan to put the movement in the sidewalk and build the additional island, we added some, we actually added some landscaping on the, I guess it would be the south side of the plan. So Right, what, correct, that plan. What are the uh, open issues as you see them if we approve these modifications? Um, the last thing that we need to do, um, I think, you know, and I've reviewed this with Georgia, yeah, um, and talked to Joe about it, was the installed water lines and valves, those need to be shown on Joe's as-built plan. Um, the invert information, is it the other piece Yeah, we probably have an as-built plan that's probably at 90%. 90%. So we would have to go back through and add two or three items to that plan, and then we'd have the full as-built plan of the project site. All right, so it would be the invert information for the drainage and sewer infrastructure, the installed water line and valves, and the hydrants installed at station. I'm not sure the language. <laughs> at those, two different stations. Yeah, a couple right. of hydrants. And those are installed. They, they need to be marked on Joe's, Joe's plan, so we need to go out and take some field um, mm -hmm. observations, yeah. So not a lot left. And what's your timing on that? Oh, where did it go? By the way, we weren't aware that we needed those, but we'll uh, put those at the top of the list so we beat the upcoming well, foul snow weather season. that uh, is due to visit us soon. So maybe the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yes. The, chair. Uh, the sidewalks uh, originally were supposed to be impervious or, or pervious, not impervious. Are they concrete sidewalks or what is the makeup of Asphalt. The asphalt. Or asphalt. They run all the way down. I can't see with the snow here. They run all the way down from the street all the way through. Right, That's from Hayden yeah. Road to the turnaround at the end. Yeah. Just one side, right? Or is it? Right. Just, Just one side. side. Yeah. If I may, through the chair, so yep. what was the rationale to use the impervious material instead of the porous material? We went over this the last it, it, you know, iteration. We you know, talked about it when we modified the landscape plan and I, as, as I recall, um, it was on the plan that said there was a conflict between what the plan said and what the decision said. Is that correct? That's correct. The plan said impervious. The decision said pervious. Impervious was installed, and that's why the contract came back site. to get it rectified. Okay, so the plan, the plan that was approved, said impervious. Yes. No. 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 Said, said pervious. Right. The, de pervious. the decision said impervious. It's the opposite. Okay. We came back with a modified plan with impervious and changes to the landscape plan that 
ultimately ended up getting approved, that ended up in our contractor's hands that ended up adding the, the um, asphalt as opposed to a pervious material. Anybody have any other questions? I guess, um, is, does Beta think the stormwater management is adequate now that it's a, uh, impervious? Yeah, I mean, sidebar? Joe, you can address that. We expanded the um, base now. Mark had reviewed that as well um, in a letter to Elaine over the summer, which I'm, I'm sure is, I think is in your packet. So to answer your question, yes. Uh, this, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your, your question. What, the, the, this would be uncomfortable with the fact that we had impervious sidewalks that were still the drainage calves go. Right, yeah, the original design uh, included uh, for the basement sizing, for the basin, excuse me, sizing included impervious sidewalks. So it was always anticipated from a design standpoint that we wouldn't <coughs> um, be counting on the walks for infiltration and that the base would be large enough if they were considered impervious to handle that. So when they changed to pervious, in essence, it created a safety factor of one or two percentage points that the basin was larger than it needed to be. So we revert back to impervious. The basin is still sufficiently sized. Okay. We, I think you guys may recall, we bought this project from Bill Perkins. You remember? He ended up permitting it, and we ended up purchasing it from him. Cautionary tale right I there. Think he, I don't even know if he did. Did, did he fully permit it? Did he finish? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. All right. So do you need a vote on these? So there'll be a motion to approve the, the modifications. <laughs> yeah. And then if the board wants to address the bond release now, or they can do it as um, when we have more time at the end of the meeting. Okay. But don't they still need to show the um, the water lines and valves and the hydrants? So they're asking for a partial, a partial. release down to 5000 from 258000 um, And then the, as we had discussed, if the board approves that, they would come back with the as built with these items on it to release the last five. I do notice that there's members of the public. Is anybody interested in speaking to this? You have to come up here, and you have to introduce yourself, Mr. Moderator. Tom here, Median, 5 down Fort Lane. Uh, we're supportive of what uh, Mr. Parsons and, and the development group want to do. Um, they've fulfilled all of their, virtually all of their obligations to, to the development. Uh, there are a couple of trees that will need to be replaced in the spring, but beyond that, they've uh, been very very good in terms of dealing with the, the homeowners association to be in terms of addressing our our concerns and, uh, again we're supportive of the reduction in the bond requirement and, and the modification forward to taking over the association i remember a year ago you looked forward yes, to that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, no, no, just the wrong date <laughs> <laughs> any second now all right thank you um so I'll entertain a motion to approve the. Sorry, yeah. No. Can we also hear from Beta about the lighting? Yes. Oh, about anything. And thank you, Mr. Garbini. Or Beta's not. Beta provided not their final reviews. Their final reviews. Okay. okay. Oh, say that again. Sorry. Beta closed out their review. They just issued their final review. So Phil wasn't prepared to comment on this because Beta's given their final observation report. <coughs> The board of Okay, well, I have a specific question about that. I would like to ask Phil. Oh, okay. Phil? What was it? I have a Bill, question. Yeah, you yes. You would like to ask your question. Okay. As long as they can hear us on TV. Um, there's two street lights. Uh, there was some discussion a year ago, 11 months ago. Uh, if we eliminated one street light, the, the lights closest to Hayden Row. Um, would what were your thoughts or what are your thoughts on that or do you need to look at it again to be able to answer that? Yeah, um, unfortunately I <clears throat> I was not present when some of this was going on mm -hmm. and so my, my colleague Matt, Matt Crowley was handling this uh, review 
Uh, if you could point me out to where those lights were, maybe there's some. There's three, right? Yeah, there's three. One of the two that are nearest to the row, uh, the question had been, do, we, do they need both of them, and what if there was just one? Oh, the, the two right, the two circles right there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see why there would need to be two. I mean, you want to clearly identify where the entrance is. So, is some it just standard uh, single pole? Right, the, the furthest Eight dark... Detail. Ring looks like it's 0.6 foot candlelight. So you're talking. I don't know. I mean, they're not they're not overly bright. I, I mean, we can cap them. Through the chair, just for clarification. Yeah. Do these two exist already, or they do? Yes. Mm -hmm. so. All three, three lights. The lights all yeah, exist. I'm they were put in in a in. I'm not sure I'd be comfortable asking them to take one down. If I may. Oh. Yes, you may. <laughs> Um, I live along uh, 85, and I drive past this all the time. These are quite dim and not very obtrusive. Um, just, just my my personal opinion. Um, so, and I think the symmetry of having one on each side is, you know, works for that spot. There's not houses right next to the light where the lights are either. So. I don't hear feedback and haven't heard that they're willing if they are too bright or anything they'd be willing to cap them I'm, I'm comfortable with them as they are as they are there's some discussion 11 months ago about changing the whole thing but uh, I understand it's a complex project and they weren't the original developers and um, but we covered a lot of ground on this previously and then last year and, and um, I just don't want to miss anything that we had discussed before so that's why I brought it up Yes. I don't want them to have to remove the lights, but it's just this is not the sort of light we would have approved, I don't think. Uh, you know, I can see on Lowe's website it's not dark sky compliant. Right, I mean, we can't hear you. Sorry. It's um, not dark sky compliant. I struggle compliant. with it. I don't want them to have to remove the lights if they're needed for right. safety, but this is not the type of light we would have approved, I don't think. So I, I struggle to, with it. Is there a way to make it without removing it, make it compliant? Well, they offered to put a cap, I guess, but it's, uh, I just struggle with it. It's not the type we would have approved but it's there now, so we're in an awkward position. Well, I think that, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I think from what I remember was they, they were wayfinder lights as opposed to driveway lights, street lights. They're like almost a light you'd install in the top of your driveway outside. In fact, they're maybe a little taller than... Lamppost. Than, yeah, essentially what they are. So, but to Amy's concern through the chair, um, Candlelight power, they seem to be in range, but they're not, how are they not dark sky? Because the light reflects up to the sky. Because there's no sound of copper. And there's a, it's a specific certification that it would be marked on the light when you bought it. And those are, those are very dim. They are? I mean, I, okay. I, I, they are. All right. You haven't seen this one. Okay. How are we feeling about that motion? I, one Sarah. quick question on the yeah. motion. I just want to know from um, Mr. Markwood on if um, is five thousand dollars adequate to finish the. Oh, we're the we're bonds? we're on the modifications first, not oh. yet the bond. Okay, but sorry. No, nope, that's okay. It's a good question, though. In a minute. I've got just sort of to con continue on Amy's question is if has it been done to make a light compliant? Is it as easy as putting, putting a cap, a cap on, on it? Are there caps made for it? Is that something that, that they could search for? Um, because it's true, you know, you really do want to keep it subtle. Um, and um, I think in the, in the stead of we didn't get poor, you, they didn't get poor <coughs> sidewalks and it was a mistake. And so now we're looking at the lights and that's a mis you know, a mistake that's not, you know, like horrific, but it's, but it is non-compliant and it would be nice to start to bring these places into compliance and not have these mistakes made. So I'm, I'm just wondering if that's something you'd be willing to do or look at to see if there's something simple that can be done. Uh, through the chair, I just, we would be happy to look into that. I think it would be helpful to hear from a resident of, of Davenport who lives there and, and sees us. I have not been there at night recently, so if Mr. Garabini would mind speaking about his feelings on the light, just because you see it every day and yeah. If it's if it's too bright, I'm happy. I to predict that. he's going to love it. Uh, <laughs> so the 
risk of confusing this even further, one of our residents has, has yeah. purchased several new lights that, uh, <clears throat> that probably are more compliant than the existing lights. It's not anything that we're going to install at this point. Uh, but but I, I wish I'd brought a picture of it, but I believe they're, they're capped as well. It wouldn't change the wattage. So I'm not sure I understand. So you're going to change the top of it? Uh, I think when, we, when <laughs> these folks take over the, the condo association, they're going to make, I guess, you know, some, some minor modifications. But uh, there's no intent to do anything that's going to further make it non-compliant. Let me put it that way. As, as it relates to the number, I mean, from an aesthetic perspective, having two there is, is, uh, just makes more sense aesthetically than to have a single one. As you drive along that, that road at night, uh, it helps to demarcate where the street opening is. It's dark. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's very dark. Which some of us love, actually. <laughs> some of us don't put light posts at the end of our very scenic driveways. But some uh, of us do. Some of us do. Uh, yeah. So I have a question. Um, so you're going to be doing modifications to these very poles. Would it Not to be, the poles, simply to, to the, the fixtures. Yeah. Okay. Would it... Be, behoove you to work with them now to, to before you get it to be the homeowners association to to correct the issue because if it's not compliant with us then we're helping you with that issue again I wish I had brought the, the drawing of the, uh, the picture of the fixture again it's simply on the top it's just designed to be a little bit more colonial than the, the particular structure which is there today we, I mean we you know, we can certainly work with, uh, with uh, Mr. Parsons on it. We didn't kind of want to introduce that in, in, a, in a way that would serve to um, adversely affect what's going on now in terms of their bond reduction and so on. So to be clear, it would still only be three lights? Yes, we're not, right. we're not adding um, and or numbers. Lights or numbers. And would you check and see if it's night sky compliant, dark sky compliant? Sure. So to clarify for the chair, it seems like the developer's willing to, to cap the lights. The presumed homeowners association is willing to, to cap the lights and they're working together and technically we could have a condition uh, that they cap the lights and um, that I think would be a good way to move forward. I'm, I'm okay with letting it go. I just wanted to express the frustration. Well, you started this, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we, don't, we don't want to set precedent because they're, uh, we're accepting something that's not in compliance. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion? Well, we do need a motion. But um, I, I, here's the complicating factor. You have um, a, a homeowners association to be... Um, it would be a little bit uh, unprecedented to condition the developer on a future action of the homeowners association to be. Although I have confidence that Mr. Garabini is telling us the truth and has some inside knowledge of what's going to happen. I, I guess I would. I think it's simpler not to. Um, I'm. I'm I, I appreciate the point. I think that uh, dark sky compliant is something that uh, is clearly delineated in in uh, our bylaws, and the town is you know looking for that. And to not to have three lights pop up without approval and have them not be dark sky compliant just adds to the perceived insult. Yes. Um. I, I agree with you. I don't think we need to write it in as a, a requirement. I think we should just rely on the good faith of the developer and the, the homeowners association and we could better spend our time on other things. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the modification? So, so moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Uh, Any I'll abstention? Oh, there's a nay and an abstention. Okay. I'm abstaining. Two abstentions and one nay. Two oh boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> two no's, yeah, two I'm abstentions. Gonna, gonna so you have five. It was, uh, it was a very close call there. 
right? Yeah. All right. Uh, I, it's just um, obviously, um, I think the board is being very flexible with a, a very um, awkward development piece. Thank you. Okay. Can, can I just make one comment? You can. Um, and I, I really appreciate Mr. Garabedian coming, Mr. Garabedian coming to speak, and I think that, that weighed a lot on me. But I also think that we overall have a, a problem with compliance sometimes with regards to a lot of these things, and we as a board don't have a lot of, 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 of there's not a lot of courses of action that we can take when people don't comply. So that's really, I just wanted to explain my my neighbor here, because I think that, that overall we need to find better ways to instill compliance so that people do what they say they're going to do. Um, and that they actually build what they propose they're going to build. So, um, I just wanted to. You know, I need that. to uh, apologize. Um, I did not uh, vote to open in a timely fashion the continued public hearing on Buckland Street and Leonard Street. I need a motion on so that. Moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Apologize. Um, okay, so we'll have to take up the bond question in a little while at the end. So I'm going to invite Buckland and Buckland Street and Leonard Street forward, and I do apologize, I lost track of the time. I guess we have a tight agenda tonight. Yep. Whoops. Hi, right, come on forward. So technically, Georgia, we need to vote on the paper street. We could extend the deadline, but we have a deadline to respond. Under the petition process, so it's a, a part of the Is this a letter that was not in our packet? No. Uh, yes. That yes. Yes, it was not in our packet. Yes, oh. it was not in our packet. <laughs> it just came today? Yeah. Oh, we hadn't emailed it then. Okay. Okay. Um, but you know. Friday. <coughs> you, you emailed it, no? There's two letters. Oh, okay. The one from Mirrors and Computer Barbieri came in today. The one from Mirrors and Computer Barbieri. Yes, we did get that one. Good. This one is new to us today. All right. And Mr. Barbier is here to discuss what's in this letter. Excellent. Okay. okay. Take us away. Thank you for your patience. Good evening. Uh, Lou Petrosi here for Wall Street Development Corp. And I have with me uh, Rob Truex from GLM Engineering. Uh, just as an update, since we uh, last met a couple of weeks ago, we uh, did revised plans to address the comments of your peer consultant data <coughs> and I believe they've uh, reviewed the plans and have uh, submitted a uh, revised letter to the board. Uh, we also uh, had an opportunity to uh, <coughs> had an opportunity to meet with the fire chief uh, a week or so ago and we've discussed some of the parameters that safety issues that um, would involve size of equipment and turning radiuses that uh, he might need for equipment uh, in and out of Parkland Street and Maple Street extension. So he did provide us with a template that we have not uh, incorporated onto the plan yet, but we will probably be doing that in uh, the next course of revisions, if there are some. And um, we did have uh, five minutes to have a conversation with Attorney Barberi to address some of the concerns that he had in his letter. Um, so I think um, from that standpoint, um, we can uh, have uh, Rob go through the project, stormwater management, or I don't know what the pleasure of the board is. So um, I was thinking that we might focus on the paper street question, but it's up to the board. Do you want to invite Attorney Barbieri up so we can have the full conversation? Sure, sure. I like Peter. He's a good guy. Come down. <laughs> Peter, sit, sit. 
probably can't hear you. Oh, I can. Uh, I uh, have not read the letter. I didn't realize we had gotten one today. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is Peter Iberian, attorney with Fletcher Tilton. I represent the property owners, at, I guess, at 58 and 60 uh, Pleasant Street. Uh, I did have occasion to chat with the applicant before tonight in regards to the letter that I sent out over the weekend. Uh, a, a significant concern from the viewpoint of my clients is what happens drainage-wise from the viewpoint of these proposed improvements. Um, in the plans, at least the way I saw them, looking at that letter or a little bit confusing what I have discovered tonight is that the cross section that you see on the sets of plans is from what I'm told correct me if I'm wrong but is not the cross section for roughly the first 300 feet of road from Pleasant Street in but the cross section in front of the four proposed houses so that's the section with the drainage trail so again my concern or my request is that you have them do a cross section of the roadway for the first 300 feet because it's it's very tight and maybe the the cross section as well as that section of the roadway on the plan needs to be blown out because it's difficult some to see from this plan but at the top of the edge of buckland street you see a little black line which i to some extent i guess misunder mistook to be an edge of pavement line but what i'm told now is actually a contour line so that there is a change of grade along that uh, top side of, of uh, Buckland Street uh, adjacent to what's identified on that plan is, is Elder. Uh, so Ready again, I think right. that section of, yeah, sorry, but I have a point of order kind of here. Yeah. Should we be focusing on whether it's a way or not and not talk about any future construction, but the current. Yeah, it's not a bad point. So I don't know if you heard me when I called you forward and I did not know what was your, in your letter. We were going to talk about um, the way in existence. Yeah, I was, I was focusing on the improvements for us. So my only request from the viewpoint of the improvements, I think the questions I read in this written letter, I think they have answers for. I would just ask that you make them provide a cross section for that first 300, 300 feet of road. In that first 300 feet of road that they blow up and show the grading. Again, the major concern is the runoff from that section of the roadway is going on the adjacent properties. And also that the the uh, new roadway intersection with Pleasant Street. Um, I'm not really sure of the details there, whether it's curbing, whether it's not. There is curbing down Pleasant Street, so uh, I think they need a blow of that to see what's happening so that drainage doesn't go on to either of the properties. I think they can do it, uh, and that's, a, that's, that's the improvement question. So I think, again, they've answered, uh, from what I understand to be the questions in my most recent letter. The question of, of the roadway, I did provide uh, a, a response uh, letter to your town council uh, from the viewpoint of our position in regards to the first, again, I'm going to use 300 feet as, as the rough section, but roughly the first 300 feet of Buckland Street to, to the point where the Wall Street property starts. Uh, my opinion is that that was land never held in common ownership with the owner of the Buckley's predecessor in titles. And I think council has, town council has agreed with the, the statutory reading is if you abut a road at the end of the road, then you don't have rights in that road. So simply put, that's, that's our position, is that they never had deeded rights to Buckland, and therefore they only abut it at the end, and the derelict fee statute does then not apply. And I, I assume that's been forwarded to council and... I would ask that you kind of wait and see what his, his answer on that question is. Because that's the cases that Wall Street's attorney identified from the viewpoint of their rights in the road were none, none of them were cases that uh, involved separate ownership. They were all common ownership land cases. So in, in layman's terms. <laughs> the, <laughs> um, the property, you don't necessarily dispute as much the section of the road that abuts his property, but the section of the road that is between the two existing houses on Pleasant Street. Yeah, the first 300 feet of road are shown on plans going back into you know, 1900s. The next section of Buckland Road shown in front of the Wall Street property, the previous owner of the Wall Street property just 
laid it out and recorded the plan and said this is Buckland. No town approvals, no nothing, uh, and again, no rights, in our opinion, to the east. So it would be like me laying out a road, connecting to a road that I don't have any rights in, is our, is our position. And that's what's in your letter to, that we yeah, got today? Yeah, that's the most recent thing as well as a case of, of non-common ownership determination. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Attorney Barbieri? Oh, so many. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> So, I, I, again, I would ask that you wait for counsel, but I also ask from the viewpoint of the plan that they show blow-ups of, of the first section of 300 feet so it's determined that drainage won't be an impact in any part. So, I think drainage is a separate issue as part of their stormwater plan, respectfully. Uh, what we're trying to focus on is the, the way in existence, if that's right. okay. So but if, if that's ultimately determined yeah. that they do, Yep. then you got to move to the next question is how that's are they building the that's correct so we, under right we understand that yeah yeah yes uh, that letter that peter had forwarded directly to or reported to me that i addressed directly to council council did review that and did did and chose not to respond but um in conversation with me they had said that their opinion still stands that the butters have not sufficiently refuted wall street's claims of rights in buckland street and that the um they still have credible rights of So council is still under the same understanding of the applicant's ownership of Buckland Street as it's stated in the memo. Okay. Questions from the board? I have a question. Um, in your research of Buckland Street, when did the lights go in? When did the, when did the light poles go in? When did what? The light poles. The the poles telephone poles. Telephone poles. Yep. No, there's nothing that I saw of plans locating coals on it. There's no nothing that I found in the nature of a grant of an easement to the electrical company for it. So you couldn't uh, find any history. Oh yeah. Do we even show those poles pole. on these, this plan? Yes. In one of our packets, October 29th, we had a photograph of a mm -hmm. pole. I guess I have photographs in this packet. Mm -hmm. I was just good trying luck. to good luck trying to find them. Establish a date. What is the what are what are the dates that they were in there? The polls? Yeah. Uh, I would ask the <laughs> there is no uh, record with that's how far back they go. I mean the M Star has changed names, the uh, Boston Edison they underwent under numerous uh, uh, names. There's, there's no record in the database that knows the numbers on those polls. Okay. You know, the only thing that I would add is that also at the end of Buckland Street, the closest one that is situated at the end of Maple Street Extension, that is connected to power to one of those in well over 100 years old. So, I mean, I'm not sure how the polls I'm not sure how that, yeah, I'm not sure how that translates for us. Um, I, have a, I have a question to ask everybody. I, I think that we need, uh, we need some more time to at least contemplate this letter that I haven't even had a chance to read. Um, and we do have um, Beta here, at least to give us their first take on the stormwater. So we're gonna shift courses, I think, um, and look at that so that we don't um, waste everybody's time. It's a functional question. Um, I agree with what you just said just now. Um, in, my, in my context, in bringing it up is that we are not in executive session, so there's something we really can't talk about among ourselves unless we are in executive session or there's some specific feedback from town council based on the latest letter uh, that Jordan forwarded to us that I would like to get more answers on before you feel comfortable. <coughs> So I'm just going to say that there are very specific guidelines for executive session, and I don't think anything we're talking about meets those, so we have to ask our questions in public. A question to town council, mm -hmm. we can do individually. Are you uh, going to email me and I can forward them to council? Sure, sure. Yeah. Would that well, work? Oh. But at some point, I, I think that maybe I'm being not overly cautious, I would feel comfortable, I would feel more comfortable if, if our board had an executive session where we could discuss the legal issues and legal cases with the town council uh, 
as we've done in the past and contentious issues? We're not in litigation with anybody. So I, I, I would. They are. That doesn't matter. We don't, we don't get a chance. That doesn't matter. But from what I'm reading from these letters, and I think I have more questions that I like to bring up that I'd like to bring up in the executive session where I get live feedback from our town council, or if I could ask them if we have more time to think about it, or they have more time to think about it and get back to us, that's great too. But either way, we need more time. And so I'm agreeing with you. Can, I, can I ask the question a different way? Yes. So along Frank's lines, but um, uh, just a different approach, and you guys tell me whether it's appropriate or not, but this is a very, as Frank's pointing out, difficult legal situation. Is this something we can look to the Board of Selectmen for uh, input from? And so the quick answer is yes, but for, for they don't have any jurisdiction over this piece. This is our this is but they our, could advise this us, is right? our happy issue. But they could do. advise us. Not really. I mean, you can ask them privately if somebody. You, I mean, there's a couple of selectmen that have a great deal of experience on the planning board. You could certainly call them up and ask them. Okay. There's nothing that yeah. Okay. Nothing Thanks that for prevents the you from doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just. But. I caution this board that you know the rules of open meeting as sure, we yeah. deliberate this everything we talk about happens in this public yeah no that was yeah. not along those yeah. lines but I'm, I'm totally good with the open meeting point of view but from my point of view it's just hard for these this house was this second house was built not recognizing a right of way there so how do we vote on it being a right of way when other zoning decisions have already been made that's what that's what i'm wrestling with you know I, so. i'm wrestling with this a lot too and i don't know what that i don't know what those owners knew or didn't know or were obligated right. to find out for themselves and we don't have responsibility for that we ha you know we have a very um sort of um established responsibility here this is just by the way this is just me everybody must <laughs> weigh in but no keep um, going this is good but um it's it's definitely a ticklish question and we are, I think all of us understand the complexities and all of us can picture ourselves living in those two houses and um, not knowing that there was a, a street there potentially um, so yeah it's complicated for sure but I think that we have to for me how I'm falling down on this is that we have to weigh heavily on the information that we get from town council on this um, and and we don't have an opportunity to talk about it in executive session. Well, my clarification is, my request for executive session is, so if we do our homework and we understand all the legal ramifications, because if one of us says something like, oh, that house was built, not facing whatever, and they'll say, oh, the planning board member said this is an open meeting, and we need to be able to talk with firm legal uh, ground on this. And I think the best way to do that might be through executive session or dealing with the so I'm willing to be wrong, Frank, but I'm telling you, I don't think that this, that, that there's any reason for us to go into executive session, but you can ask Georgia that question directly. I, I feel comfortable yeah. either way. I just wanted to bring it up as a, an option yeah. that we cover all our bases yeah. and make yeah. sure that we're... Somebody will have to Google what are, what are the reasons to go into executive yeah. session. So, Madam Chairman, woman, I mean, I mean, my perspective on this, and this is just you know reading through the legal, the, the town council guidance and whatnot, is that we really need to separate the the legal, the pending legal issues that are occurring versus our own approval mm -hmm. process. That's right. Um, and and just because you know, let's just say hypothetically that, that we did uh, agree that that this street does in fact exist, that doesn't necessarily give them the immediate right to go start building homes. There's still right. an approval process. Um, and, and so there's a lot of opportunities to review what they're doing. Um, and I, I assume that legally there are other things that, that those abutters could do to try to stop it, um, even if this road were, were approved. So, so to me, that's how I'm trying to sort this out, is to separate the, the, the legal issues and, and let that work its way out between the attorneys. Um, and for us to do our job as a, as a planning board, um, and, and, and make a, and make an assessment in our best judgment as to whether or not the street exists. And then, if we deem that, that street does exist, then we move on to the next phase, which is actually evaluating stormwater and potentially other things. Um, and I, can I just make one more comment too? Okay. From a scheduling perspective, I, I would 
actually recommend we don't move into the stormwater stuff because we've already got two people that are waiting to finish up with and the next hearing I think is slated to start in it's going to be minutes. continued it is okay. yeah this just in. So yeah but thank you just along those lines and I, I appreciate that point that's good because to your point um, regardless if we decide if it's a way then we could apply our own zoning regulations to that Right. Subdivision, subdivision rules and regulations. No, for a road, right? For a road, whatever. Yeah, subdivision. Yeah. Um, so that's a that's a whole separate question. Right. Right. But my that question to you, following my question quickly. to you is, do we have to make a judgment on whether it's a, a right away or not? So I think that that is a, what what I understand is that's a, a, an accepted um, precedent that the planning board usually does make a decision on that right that's, and, and that's what we ask them to do under the petition process mm -hmm. and town council has recommended that we do so yes. right and i also remember right, no, right, right. right and i also remember reading in his le town council's letter um that we could you know their their recommendation is one thing but we could um discover or decide on other evidence um yeah i did see that that we don't well. agree with, with it but yeah so can i suggest that um for our next meeting, everyone prepare their arguments why it is and why it isn't, and we can listen to that, and, and hopefully we can come to a decision as to whether. I or think not you've we got it from my perspective. I don't know what rebuttal <laughs> they want. Adoption of the zoning uh, subdivision control law in Hopkinton was adopted, so the evidence has been submitted. So, okay, so, uh, so to, I'm sorry. Just to just to follow up, I am not a lawyer, mm -hmm. and I am reading it, and I am confused as to who's who's saying what, and you're telling me that the this section of the road isn't there because of something, and I, for my benefit, if I'm expected to make this decision, which I think is a very complex decision, I think I need <coughs> to hear in layman's terms, not not legal terms what your basis is and what your basis is for whether or not this is in fact the way. Well, I, I would say, I'm not speaking from Attorney Barberi, but I would say Mr. Barberi is talking about what he reads in the recorded documents to determine whether or not the way was in existence at the time this uh, subdivision control law was adopted in Hopkinton, you look at physical evidence, whether or not the way existed on the ground, whether or not there's other evidence to suggest that the way was used for access or travel during the period of time the subdivision control law was adopted <coughs> and that's july of 1953 what happened after that is in my estimation not relevant uh, because it's it's a frozen moment in time according to the statute so we've submitted aerial photographic evidence to uh, to provide documentation that the way did exist on the ground both in <coughs> 1936 and in 1986 we submitted photographs of existing utility poles that had to be installed by traveling up that way um, we've submitted a description in the deed that was uh, recorded at the time the property uh, was conveyed to <coughs> 1946, and we've also submitted prior legal opinions from Hopkinton Town Council that date back to 1998. We have legal opinion from my own council so, uh, from 1998 as we well. All, so we all have that documentation in our packets, I, and we have new, new information. I'm going to submit that we really have to meet again. Okay. Um, so... Um, I assume that we can get an extension from you on that petition. Okay. Um, can I ask one question, of Georgia? Yes. Yeah, so, can. has town council reviewed everything that's been submitted from for the way both sides for the way for the ways it way in existence? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And their opinion in the memo is still relevant, and, and that's what. It's and neither of you have anything additional to add to that. So I, town council's reviewed everything that you've submitted, and you neither of you have anything new to add specifically to the to the to the. To the so road. the next time we talk about this, we will already have everybody's. Yeah, I, I got an opinion from council that was earlier this month, 
And I just submitted a revised thing, so I don't know what has transpired since then. But, but that, That's that, this. But that opinion is really, excuse me, Jim. That opinion relates to the rights. Mr. Barbier is talking about rights in the way. The way in existence issue is yeah. whether or not it exists on the ground, which yeah. is a totally right. different yeah. issue. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping that the members can separate the two. One is related to rights, which is Attorney Barbieri's claim that we don't have any rights. The other issue is whether or not the way existed on the ground in July of 1953. And that's the determination that the planning board has to make. So would it be appropriate to ask the abutters if they also had evidence one way, whether it was a way in existence or not? Some of the abutters are represented by the attorney, but some yeah, are yeah, not. Yeah, absolutely, people, abutters. I think that we should just, I think we should just plan to have the way in existence conversation until we solve it. Trying to move on to the others, but can I ask one more yeah, question? I really want to ask Phil what his input is, though, because he came all this way for this. But yes. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to understand the process a little clearer. So if, if for say, we do vote this as of right away, yep. um, I think this is along what Gary was saying, it is possible that because of our zoning regulations and the closest of that house that we could vote not, to not make any improvements to that right away. Is that a possibility? I assume that that is a possibility. Okay. Right? I'm just trying to figure out the options that we have in yep. front of us. Yeah. At least that's how it is in my, in my mind, but I'm not the end all and be all. Okay. Um, it would be helpful if I wrote out for the next meeting what the options are. Anything. Yes. Terms. Yes. 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 It, be it would be. No, right. <laughs> no, right. actually, we applaud yeah. accessible Please. language, actually. Well. So I'll make sure we <laughs> Not being a lawyer. And may I, may I say, Georgia, um, that um, the equivalence or non equivalence of way on the ground and way in existence is a big question to me that I feel like the only person who can answer that adequately is the town council. So what's the difference between those? Just the dip what's the difference? Are they equivalent? Are they not equivalent? Are they, you know, related <laughs> in a different way than equivalent? Well, they, they, cousins, way, they, they stated way in existence in their letter. They just, they, that term is used by all of the councils in all of the letters at some point, yes. But way on the ground or actually built out is is used differently and has been used a number of different times but it's not clear whether or not those two things are the same so and i don't want to hear from anybody other than the town council well, sorry, on that just, subject just okay. through, through the moderator, <laughs> I would moderator. Question, i would question do we even need to bring that terminology in can't we just focus on way in existence according and not confuse no, the situation because the way on the ground is cited by um either a town council um current town council or a previous town council in one of the letters I can't find the reference okay. right now because yeah. there's so many of them. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm fine sense. to have the clarification yeah. of myself. Uh, anything that makes it printed into sharper focus would help me a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. So. I have to. I'd really like to respond to that. That might be the type of question the town council could sit with us in executive session and answer the things that legal one on one that we don't know. They, they, we are a quasi-judicial board. So here's that. the deal. That's just what here's the deal. You've, you've, you've said the same thing five times. But here's an example why. Uh, I'll, no, this, the law is clear. I will, I will ask that question, if there's any, but I don't think there's any way for us to go into executive session, whether we would like to or not. I'm just saying. Yep, I know. You've said it five times. Um, okay. Um, and I will ask the question. Right? George all right. is going to spell where it all out it, for us. Where are we going? Yeah, George is going to clarify this whole thing for us. Um, we need a Christmas miracle is what we need. Um, <laughs> Can I have just one request for the next time? Hey, hold on. Okay. I would like to know when we're going to put this. To, and you can certainly ask your question in a second. When is our, is, do we have the meeting on the 28th? I'm sorry. Of all the questions. Of all the questions. <laughs> January 28th, yes. Right, and nothing on the nothing agenda. Nothing on that agenda. So I propose that we move this forward to that date first, and we leave 
a sizable amount of time. An hour? For the conversation. I would say at least an hour. Does that, does that work for the board? Mm -hmm. All right, 7.30 yes. and nothing else before 8.30. Um, and uh, just to be Let clear, we're going to uh, speak to the Let Buckland, the, uh, the way in existence or the way on the ground mm -hmm. um, first. I'll talk to my client. You do the cross okay. So uh, at this point, when are we extend? When are we continuing? This is going to seem like I'm not paying attention, but when are we continuing Whisper Away till? Because it's that time. Um, he had requested uh, January 14th to our next meeting. 14th. And what time would you propose? Um, so 9 o'clock, we're talking about paper streets and sidewalks, those Zach items. Um, uh -huh. And that's the last item we have. So the board wanted to dedicate 25 minutes to the Zach. Okay. So say 925 for Whisper Way? Yes. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue the public hearing for Whisper Way to January 14th at 9.25. We also need to extend the decision deadline. Yes. The applicant had requested uh, January 14th, but I think it would make sense um, to maybe make that a couple more days. If something were to approve like, that night, we would have to make the decision that night. Yeah, so how about um, the 21st? I was going to say the 24th, just so okay. we have a good 10 days. All right. It, can we make the, the combined motion? Yes. Yeah. So moved. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, oh, okay. yes. Go I did have the one thing I wanted to request for the Buckland before next next time. So, but we're voting on Whisper Way because I'm I'm Only continuing. On I'm sorry, okay. I'm not done with Buckland. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Toby, you got all that? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that's the Whisper Way. Yes, Amy. I'm so sorry. So one of the key pieces of evidence on the way of, in existence is the 1938 aerial aerial photograph. Um, but the copy we have has like a little flag on top of it that covers, not covers, but obscures a little bit the, part, the part that is most in question. What so page are you on, Amy? It's, uh, it's actually October 29th minutes because it the was photograph, a photo then. The photograph photo. um, was only a good photograph when you went into the, um, the Google Docs or yes, whatever it was. That, right? the, so it's package that we had provided did not scan well or in color. So I have four of these copies. If some members want to share, take them home. But, but there's like a sticky flag on it. So I don't know if we could get a copy without the sticky oh. flag or the sticky flag moved a little bit. So, uh, yeah. so the photographs, when you, when you purchase the aerial photographs, they don't come with any labels. Right. Um, so I inserted the white strip. Which I understand. That's fine. <laughs> so it could just be moved I'll, a little. I'll be, I'd, I'd be happy to bring a blow up of the of the photograph. That would be helpful. That would be helpful. Because yeah. you want electronic copies, I'm not able to scan that in. And That's fine. Provide. Just bring a, a really clear photograph for well, us. I, I can bring that at the next meeting. That'd be helpful. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any objection to hearing what Beta has to say at least initially? Um, Thanks for your patience, Phil. Just uh, for the record, uh, my name is Phil Paradis. I would have been a professional engineer, certified professional in film art quality as well. So we have been, uh, as was stated, uh, we reviewed the initial submission. Uh, we sub subsequently reviewed a second uh, supplemental for uh, documents. Uh, and we've offered a letter dated December 12th, of which we will focus on, I don't know, but we have 10, 10 or so uh, items that are still kind of outstanding. Uh, I will not talk about the waiver requests, requesting waivers at this time, okay. but we'll focus on the substance of our review. So, so the, uh, the, the roadway, both, uh, uh, comes up from Buckland, I mean uh, Pleasant Street, and then proceeds to to is a high point somewhere in here. Um, so there'll be a little bit of hill because of the road, and therefore because the topography slopes in this direction um, to the north, uh, we are concerned about 
any uh, water being captured uh, in between uh, the road and, and the, the residence at 62. Quick interruption. Can we put that on the camera so the folks in back could see? Is that possible? Yeah. To put Phil's? What, the, do we have that one to put up? Sheet four. Maybe just. Or maybe, yeah. Yeah, point from the other side, Phil. If you point from the stand on the other side, and point that you can put on the camera. This camera. There, right. uh, there you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Although it's only it's only on that right. camera. So it's not the one in the back, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh really? Oh wait, it's coming. Modern technology. Oh look at that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. So uh, all right, we we are in the so the so ground slopes from Leonard toward the Buckland Street. Uh, well, I mean, there's a house there, but generally, generally the the topography of the land flows in, uh, in this direction. Uh, so uh, the profile, the, new, the, new, the road profile that was uh, given to us indicates. Uh, um, that the road will be have an up, up gradient and, and therefore a slight. I think it's a one foot. Or, I mean, it's not huge, but it will prevent water from flowing this way, the way it flows now. Um, so we're just concerned. We we just wanted some additional block grades um, and information relative to that. Um, So also, um, 62 has a driveway right here. Um, and so we asked, and obviously the, there's gonna have to be some cooperation between um, uh, the, these folks and the 62 to give them a new driveway. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they'll have to park on the road or uh, and whatever. So that won't work there. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, it, I'm just saying there's, the, there's a driveway for 62 right now mm -hmm. that's going to be disrupted with the construction of this road. So, right. Um, so T, T2 and T3 relate to turning radiuses and um, fire truck access and whatever, I, and I, I think. Um, it was indicated that these are ongoing, so we would expect to, to review those when they come in. Uh, Chair, can you just point out where those would be? So, so there's uh, obviously the getting in and out of Buckland here, and then also uh, how the turnaround itself works uh, off, off, the, uh, off the end of the road. Thank you. What's the total length of the road? That That's from Pleasant all the way to the end? To the end of the pavement. Through the chair. Thank you. That's, they would need a waiver for yeah. a cul-de-sac unless they connected to through to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, SW7. Uh, this is so they provided a couple tests right here in this location, pretty near the road. We're concerned because of just the sheer, the, the, the surface of the wetland is, is, follows the topography. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted another test pit in this corner just to confirm that it's not sloping in that area and therefore it's not going to be, have, we're not going to see breakout in that corner once they construct them in. I mean, the basin, so. Uh, also, uh, SW12, and, and I don't know if I've said this elsewhere, but the project is waiving a lot of the um, landscaping issues. And one of your regulations says that um, you need to have, provide a landscaping plan describing the woody and herbaceous vegeta vegetative stabilization and management techniques 
to be used within the within and adjacent to the stormwater practice. Um, and they indicate they're going to do seeding. So I, I'm, I'm not the, and I'm, I'm not a landscape architect, but I'm also not understanding exactly what the intention of that uh, requirement is. Uh, they did offer to say that they would be uh, providing obviously moment C, uh, but that doesn't do any kind of screening or anything like that. So. The clarification referring to the northwest corner of, of where you're pointing, or you're talking about the entire area. I just read you what it says in the regulation. So I think it's a question um, in the requirement, not what so they're I think, doing. I think I'd probably need some help from you guys exactly what that means. What number was that again, Phil? Uh, SW12. Thank you. But you, you refer to the entirety of the north side? Could you point to that? I'm just trying to be clear. You, you just well, this is a big, this is a, a infiltration basin with a, with a sediment foray. So they couldn't long there. No, so they, they, re, they had to go to the Conservation Commission. Or, I mean, I'm sure they are. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're going to have to get. I mean, they're within the, the the whole thing. Most of the product is within 100 feet of the wetland. So, um, but relative to your stormwater management regulation, it says provide a landscape plan. So I'm assuming you wanted some sort of landscape features and, and stuff for that. So maybe you can help. With that. Considering the area, I would say yes. Go on. Yes, please. Yep. Okay. So uh, SW twenty one. Uh, so this is just uh, additional requirement for the O and M. Just allow um, allow a planning board or its designee to be able to go and inspect it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why this has to wait, but I would I would include it now. Mm -hmm. um, estimated estimation of uh, the budget for the O and M as well. Did I skip some? And um, W one uh, relates to there's a fairly significant amount of water that a discharges from here, but also flows in this direction, feeds these wetlands. And essentially this development will provide kind of a berm, which b will both redirect some of the, I think the, I think we drew a line similar to this, right, Ron? Yeah, come, come so, so this uh, goes that way anyway. This one typically goes across and into this, it, this area. And then there's ultimately a little stream yeah. that crosses Maple Street up here. Along the side, and a, and a little, and a really small culvert. Yeah. Um, so we we just wanted to, to make sure that the uh, Rob and his team understood that, that that's going to be, you know, the, you're going to redirect flow this way, but also the probably the ground and and the subsoil is going to be pretty high relative to groundwater, mm -hmm. and whether or not we we just wanted to avoid putting in foundation drains to draw down the wetlands. Um, I mean, that's probably a bigger item for the Conservation Commission, right. in which uh, Rob iterated that. Mm -hmm. um, Is that tomorrow night for you guys? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> sure. Um, so where Maple Street curves around uh, is where the Started that culvert on the side of the road is, and I think that's more west than this. This shows, but um, it's it's. It, I want to say it's pretty close to this property line. I would imagine a little further down because it falls a little further, a little further down down the plan the curve. Yeah. Okay. Huh? <coughs> yeah. Tor towards the end of where the Maple Street extension wording is. Yeah, 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 right here. No, the other no, way. The other way. Further. Right there. Yeah, but with right the ST. That's where the road starts to curve, and that's where the yeah. culvert is. Yeah, the, no, the, cur the culvert is not at the curve. It's further down. Mm. Right. 
the end of the right. Maple Street. Is it? There's a, there's a stone wall here. Is, is it near mm -hmm. the stone wall? I should say the end of the current Maple Street extension because that's a little different than the uh, the, the map shows. Maple Street um, does show Uncle the maps. Say that again. The current Maple Street extension ends up in someone's driveway. Now. Yeah, yeah. It ends. Um, and that's where the that's where the culvert is. It's obviously kind of maybe a man-made culvert. Uh, the road goes over it in a certain way. Um, it's hard to describe. It's like from the 1930s or something. Uh, and I'm just wondering where that source is. Is it good in here or is it someplace else? I think it might would be more further west a little bit. So I'm just I'm just right now just wondering what we're getting at. So that might so, so we received quite a few photos from 58. Is that 58 that's in the back there? Is that the name? Oh, Maple Street. Maple no, Street. Uh, Pleasant, Pleasant Street. Street. I think it's 58 Pleasant Street. And they, they indicated, now obviously it's been very wet, extremely wet fall here, but, um, but there's been a lot of water, you know, surface water. Um, in that in that yard as well. Is there the house with the solar panels? I didn't look up. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at the aerial. There you go. Is there the aerial right there? Did you get through your uh, your whole list of initial comments? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I appreciate it. Well, thank yeah. you so much. So we are officially out of time. Mr. Terry, did you have a quick oh, question? question? Okay. My name is Tom Terry from 17 Maple Street. I uh, own the property to the uh, west where this water. Put that uh, slide aside. The uh, Maple Street extension, right? right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where, so, where they're going to put that burn in. Yeah. Which is going to encourage a lot more water to come down so that if you uh, made analyze these some kind of an agreement as to why that water is going to why it is or isn't going to land in my life. that's my first question and the other one is earlier in the meeting i don't know if you were here but mr Perzuzzi mentioned that he had a discussion with the fire chief and they were going to continue for the uh for the vehicles the emergency vehicles they're going to send them down maple street extension they're going to work around the turnaround on that corner are you aware of that they have to, so Mr. Terry, just for clarification, they have a, they have a template that they have to apply and make work. So we're not, we're not there yet. They, ha they have to engage with that template and make sure it works. He mentioned uh, analyzing yep. turnaround. Yep, that he hasn't done yet. When I'm listening to him now, he's not going to be aware. He thinks it is because he hasn't had the updated information. The updated information is the turnaround's going down, going down Maple Street extension. I, I understand that's an option, but I don't, I don't well, know. But there's no uh, determination of the best way to facilitate that. That would have to be on a plan. Yeah, right. That would have to be on a plan. Right. <coughs> but your question about the water. The so so we, uh, just just because we were concerned about that, that issue as well, I guess, you know, we, I guess. Uh, but so we had uh, Rob and his team uh, break up the watershed area on the existing conditions so we could analyze that that issue um, and you know there's a there's a there's a watershed delineation that I think we put we we picked this house as kind of a, a, a demarcation so even though there's more water going this th in this direction when it's designed, they, they include a, an inf infiltration basin at the end here. So um, they have designed uh, the, this, the, um, this design includes not increasing the peak rate of runoff to this, to this property. Okay. Um, this this basin this larger as a result of that. Say that again? That basin got larger since the first two middle right. as a result of this, that. This northeast corner, down in the lower corner right this there, one, yeah. that's the high point. Yep, yep. Correct. That's 512 feet. Uh, and everything goes down. And over in the very uh, northwest corner, 
is the low corner, yep. which is 501. So it's 13, uh, 11 feet drop between there and there, and the water flows, like you said, either toward the north or toward the northwest a little bit. Right, right, right. So the water's flowing that way, and the berm is going to come in here, right? So there's no way the water's going to continue to flow down into that 501 Correct. elevation. Correct. It's changed. Right, right. I just wanted to make sure you were. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so I mean, uh, we, we reviewed the calculations that were provided and they indicate that this, the, this, the basin here is going to be able to capture and control the runoff uh, from, from this development as well as, so this, this, the flow is going to be stopped from, so there's going to be a reduction in flow to this area. Um, so the, the people on this side of the road should see a reduce. But this this is going to be maintained almost a, a existing ex ex flows. existing flows. Okay, so we're actually going to move forward. We're going to talk about this at great length, Mr. Terry. I promise. Um, okay, thank you very much. Yep. We're going to have to um, take a vote to continue this. We need to do the decision deadlines as well. Yep. So. Uh, do all the decision deadlines have to move? Yeah, the stormwater is, so if we're going to continue the hearing to uh, the 28th of January, mm -hmm. the stormwater right now is the 19th and the petition is the 7th. So if we're moving it to the 28th, what no. sounds right to you both? February 11th. Two weeks. <laughs> And let's do February 11th for both. That way they're on the okay. same. All right. Second. Thank you. So um, February, uh, January 14th at 7, I'm sorry, January 28th at 7.30 for the meeting and February 11th for the decisions. So moved. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. Madam uh, Chair, what? Additional information are you looking for us to submit? If anything? So, uh, n none that I know of that we're looking for you to submit at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Madam Chairman. Yes. Can I just add, add one comment? And this nope. is some, no. We it, we continued. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But save your comment for sure. Um. Um, bond discussion? Bond discussion next. Can we do it in five minutes or less? Come on. I'm, I'm off for two and a half. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions about the request for the bond? Thanks for waiting, guys. Yes. No problem. I just, sure. okay. I would just like okay. to know if $5,000 is enough for Mr. Mark would want to do his as bill drawings. That's all I want to know. Joe left, but I think prior he, he did uh, say that that would be satisfactory for him to complete his plans. Okay, thank you. I hope they don't cost five grand to get there. I have a question. Yeah, hold on, I'm coming. So uh, just to provide the rationale as to why the request taking it from two sixty after five. Um, I guess the five is a little bit of an arbitrary number. I, I think we feel that of the total bond of 258000 I think was our total, 258000 $258,600. $600. Uh, we've completed everything uh, with the exception of okay. three uh, points that Joe needs to now plot on that plan. So all the big infrastructures in, the sewer, the manhole cover testing's all been done, the culverts in, the sidewalks are in, all the landscaping plans in. Um, so, you know, the vast 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 majority it's you know 99 percent of this project is completed with the exception of him plotting some as-built mm -hmm. figures on on onto that uh, onto that plan and um my question was related to again the reduction the request for reduction in bonds seem to be linked to the ability to turn it over to the homeowners association are those two things linked i think they're linked in the sense that you know we I don't think we're going to release um, this over if we're not getting the, the vast majority of the bond back at this point. I think we'd have to maintain some type of control. We wouldn't turn over a, a condo association without, you know. Okay. Uh, Take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, how 
long will it take to do these last three things? I think Joe answered think? that. Yeah, he said it would be within the next two weeks. So couldn't we just release the bond in two weeks? I guess because the last time we saw you was about a year ago. I guess our position is the money's been held for almost two and a half, three years. It's a sizable amount of money, and we prefer to have that money released, obviously. And we just reconstructed the bond. I mean, we've had other contractors out there that you know, are involved with this project. So. My understanding, Amy, that he just has to go out and survey it, and right. he wants to do that before the snow flies. So. Yeah, I just, you know, it was a year since we brought these concerns to them before we saw them again. I'm with you, Amy. Um, <coughs> but I'd be happy to meet in two weeks and release it at that time. I don't know. That's done. I agree with Amy. Uh, I think that there might be year-end benefits to doing this, or. There are year-end benefits if we get it done prior to going in the next year from a tax standpoint, but... And this would be our last meeting then, before the end of the... Maybe, again, if, if, you know, 5000 is concerned, if, if it needs to be slightly increased, we don't have an issue with that. I think if you look at the amount of money, given the work that still remains outstanding, and I think you heard Tom Garabini speak tonight, we're working very closely with the homeowners and have done everything they've asked and gone above and beyond the call of duty as far as that's concerned. So we, we're not going anywhere, believe me. We, uh, we have a great relationship with, with all the homeowners. Madam Chair, sure, uh, just a comment on that. I mean, I, I think the bond probably should be reduced to a certain extent. They've done the majority of the work. Uh, they put 5000 as a somewhat bigger arbitrary number. I mean, I'd go a little bit higher than that. I'd kind of keep it at like 20. Right? So you got 90 percent. Release it. You keep 10 in the back pocket. That makes sense to me. That's to me as well. Fine. You guys be amenable to that? We would be. To clarify for the, for the chair, yeah. this is covering as built plans and work, whatever else work needs to be done, capital lands, whatever, uh, by the 14th when we next meet, anyways. Yes. Yeah, I think Joe, Joe's going to have the plan done. Oh, yeah. By he that. Said, yeah. He has to get it done prior to the weather. So, 10% is? Uh, it would be about $25,000, mm -hmm. so I can go with the extra one. I can go 25. Yeah, <laughs> Second. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to release all but $25,000 of the bond. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good night. Weeks. Thank you. All right, we are back to uh, 52 and 55. I don't go there enough. Seven minutes. So nice. <laughs> but it also, you can't see exactly. What are you laughing at? Is he laughing at us? All right, listen, we tried. Yeah, it does. That's right. Yeah. All right. I was looking at that too. Is there any objection to uh, diving right back into our public hearing outline at this point? I think we brushed the uh, Board of Health question. Yes. Okay. Agreed. <laughs> okay. So, um, not checked off is the 100 foot buffer strip of undisturbed land. Is there any questions or comments on that? Do we want to let the Board of Health go or? Oh, I thought we had let the Board of Health go. That was my intention. I apologize. No, no, I just wanted to make sure that. I thought that's what we had done. I, I'm so sorry. I thought we would wrap with you. No. Thank you for your input. Thank you. I wish I had known that you were still here. I'm sorry. I, I do have a question. Sure. Maybe a real quick one. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so right now, every member of Kruger Road has their own well. Every member, every citizen as well, uh, and people on Cedar Street have to have a well. Uh, how proactive are we as a town <coughs> ensuring that there are no issues with the with, with the NSTAR, Everstorse, Everstorse, uh, water runoff, and stormwater management, where you, you rely, seem to rely a lot on DEP, and you're on top of that, um, and we've already covered that neighbors can uh, contact you if they think there's issues. Uh, is there anything else that we could do as a planning board to
to help you keep on top of things like that? I mean, personally, I, I try to make it a, a habit of driving up Legacy North on a weekly basis, um, you know, looking for d d different environmental issues from throughout that whole area. Um, <coughs> we've got, we have, you know, the sheet flow coming out of Eversource based on a quick topographic review while I was here should be actually migrating kind of more to the northwest and I believe away from uh, Kruger going towards um, right down towards uh, the kennel and kind of in that kind of in that kind of direction um, they have their own plans in place so it, we have we have open communication. The DEP has open communication. They have an obligation to report any release to the fire department as well. So there, I mean, we have these open lines. And then from a residential standpoint, if, if, if there's evidence of um, siltation or stormwater runoff, excessive runoff debris in the streets, um, you know that obviously any of that could be reported to the health department or uh thank you and I, I i saw the chief there but i should also thank the chief for working closely with other departments in town you do a great job you go to our meetings and, and you guys are all very proactive and I, i'm glad you work together well thank you Mary, just a really real quick question yeah. for the board of health yeah just do you know off the top of your head how long that we've been doing the well testing and the trans sale of properties has that been around for a while or is that a road has been around for a while okay and it's it's the model that the DEP is looking okay. for. Okay, thank you. you. Know, so, um, okay, yeah. thank you. Welcome. But not right now, Katie. We got we got a press. They didn't answer my question. What, what was your question? My question was the why was that um, silk fence there in front of the outfall? The claim has been that there that there's no that that's not part of the project. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yep, I got it. But now they're talking about well, there's other things going on. And Katie, excuse so they me. Seem to be changing I got it. Um, I don't think that's for the Board of Health. I think that's for the applicant. Yeah. Okay. I, I apologize. I really had intended for you to be completed before. And I mean, part of this is. It's I appreciate how you learn this day, process. But I wish you hadn't had to. Thank you. Okay. So um, uh, I think it is a reasonable question. It, uh, is the um, is the f the <coughs> sediment netting is it permanent? Is it new for purposes of the testing? We we have multiple other construction projects taking place on site that wouldn't be part of site plan review or any of the other. Uh, I guess maybe potential reviews by the town. Um, they are submitted that for building permits and can go through that process. Um, but the silt fence itself, um, that particular piece there was installed at some point over the summer um, <coughs> as part of Eversource's kind of best management practices for our contractors. So if we're doing work in an area that could potentially uh, create a situation, I guess, where there could be runoff of, of uh, soil, we would require our contractors to install it. So um, there was, there's work that's taken place out there um, in the maintenance of the impoundment basin. <clears throat> there was work in the roadway within the impoundment area, or not in the impoundment area, but around the tank area. So it could have been installed for that work. Um, there's relocation of light poles and uh, security cameras that took place, so it could have been installed for one of those projects. In general, though, with all the work taking place um, down there, I'm not surprised that there'd be some silt fence or, or uh, straw wattles that were installed. Um, specifically, what project it was installed for, I'm not sure, but again, Eversource has a several hundred page best management practices handbook that goes out with all of our contractors and um, that would be required in almost all of our jobs um, taking place, whether it was at the facility or elsewhere. Yeah, so I guess the pertinent question really is, does it impact, who observed the testing, does it impact the testing for purposes of this project that we asked you for? 
So it was one of our staff who went out and, and did the testing. And um, actually, we just looked at some photos of what that silt fence looks like. And it's not abutted right against the, um, the outfall. So there's storm water that can come around it. So it does provide some protection to the outfall. But um, you know, if, the, if water is being pumped out, it doesn't really impact the quality of what's heading out there for the, for the parameters that we tested. The ones that it could potentially impact are turbidity and TSS, which came up very low. Um, that being said, there are also no standards for either of those. And after, um, in communication with the Board of Health, we had determined that we wouldn't test for those further, again, because there's minimal, um, you know, it's not like we're getting runoff from roadways that's picking up a lot of um, salts or sediments or, um, you know, de-icing. Uh, materials so there's not a lot of um, sediment loading coming in and because there are no standards to compare the results to we weren't proposing to be testing for that in the future so just because you said the word roadway we just approved a, a secondary access road mm -hmm. is it that that would change what you needed to measure. but that does nothing that roadway does not go into the impoundment area at all yeah Um, okay, any other questions on that, or are we? I have a suggestion, possibly, yeah. right, just to maybe alleviate everyone's potential concern that we put a condition in there that states we would do testing post completion of the project where there is no silk fencing uh, there, so you can get a, a read of, of, of what, the, what the testing is without it. Just as a, as a suggestion or a thought. Yeah, that's, that's fine. It's just my idea. Post project. Yeah, I think post project, and that then then it becomes part of the normal river if, if they've offered to, to to monitor it on an annual basis, monitor it so it's clean. Uh, like just to clarify, are you referring to the project in which the silt fence was installed for, or the project that we're reviewing now? Uh, I guess the project where the silt fence was installed for, because that seems to me the reason why there's some concern right now because you're not getting a true read, not the, the, the full sediment is flowing through because it's getting caught. Now, if there's additional fencing, well, let's say that project finishes up, but there's still a silt fence to I just want to clean the read. So there's not the being it's not, does it start? artificially. No. Uh, well, I think it's, uh, it doesn't capture all. type of uh, barrier in there that's kind of just uh, open up. Um, we had suggested maybe a three year yeah. Um, duration. It's maybe not clear to us when that three year would start. So presumably, if it was to start after the approval of the uh, stormwater permit, uh, the project that you're actually reviewing would not even be complete. Well, maybe it would be one year finished, or we'd have been two years into testing. So. Um, I mean, we certainly can test it again and six you know now six months from today and, and maybe that, if that or 90 days from today or whatever uh works for you and we'll call it four tests but um, i guess could we clarify when you'd want that testing to start do you want it to be after the project that you're reviewing is completed and then three years or do you want it three years after the the approval of the conditions just because the project is probably you know two years of construction I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't realize that's, that didn't that's right Pandora's box here in terms of when the project starts so I guess it would be helpful to know if that barrier is intended to be in some way permanent. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because you want to test typical conditions is what you want to test. Um, we, we, it's, it's six foot long, pull it out, test it, and you know, if they put it back for something else, that's fine, I guess. Yeah. It's not something that covers the entirety <laughs> of the impoundment area. It really is just a small stretch. Um, near near that outfall where that's located. I've, I've got pictures from our after our site lockdown November 8th where you can see I think the <clears throat> section that you're talking about and it's actually set about a foot or more off of that entrance or that pipe the, the, yeah and so the, I mean it's certainly not containing you, you in fact you can see sediment and other stuff kind of around it so it's certainly not con stopping really any flow so I, I don't think we have any issue with removing it to do some testing if that's what you'd like to see when we do the sample testing it won't be there what do we think 
I know, Fran, thanks. For, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm following the lead of our health department, and to me, this isn't an issue, so. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm thinking that it, to, to have them to further test that area because the cell fence is a, there's, it's a new point. Okay. All right. And it will be tested once a year anyway. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the placement of the cell fence had any effect on it. Good enough. All right, so we have uh, not very long. Um, the 100 foot buffer strip of undisturbed land. Any questions for the applicant? That's a waiver request, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. I think as we, we discussed at the previous hearing, um, we're maintaining 75 feet at the rear of um, the property, but at Wilson Road, um, we're working in previously disturbed areas. I'm sorry, you're... At, Wil at Wilson Street, we're working in previously disturbed areas. And how close is that? Um, there, there we're right at the at the road because that's all previously disturbed. We're doing some improvements to the entranceway. I can bring the plan up, um, but we're maintaining a 75 foot no disturb zone around the property lines at the rear of the property. We're not impacting any trees up within the 100 foot buffer anyway, right? except for the arbor vitaes. The, the arbor vitaes, yeah. I think the only trees that we even impact within, say, a 100 foot buffer of the front of the property on Wilson Street are the there's several arborvitae trees that I think the facility had planted some number of years back. We have to remove, I think, two or three of those to allow for the turning radius of the new driveway. And so I don't think there's any existing natural trees that are being impacted by this project within 100 foot of that frontage. Yeah, but back in here, we're maintaining 75 <laughs> feet off the property line. Um, so there's the infiltration <laughs> basin. Oh, Is sorry. Yeah, maybe we need to put that up on the... Yeah, sorry. Which is that on the sheets? Uh, Tracy? Um, it's sheets uh, 301, C301. And that's south and north. So, south and north. And north. Yeah. And north. So, Wilson Road being over on, on the side. So, I can put the page and show you where we are with Wilson. But there's about a 75 foot, um, there's a 75 foot property line is right around this location here. And so we're maintaining for the zoning, we're not touching anything within 75 feet of the, of the um, property line, but we are doing some grading associated with the infiltration basin within that outer 25 feet. Yep, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I remember us discussing this before and I'm comfortable with it. Changes. Anybody have any concerns with the waiver? No. Clarification. I, I just. I think maybe it might make the um, father happy. This is a roadway improvement aspect of what we're talking about, and there may be some arborvitae that are removed to widen the Wilson Street side of the gate, and on what on the Legacy Farm Road north side, uh, there are no 100 foot barrier buffers being affected <coughs> just on the Wilson Street side, which is improving the roadway and access turning radius. That's how I understand it. So. We, we, <coughs> we do, uh, and this is within our state petition, and the town has also reviewed this with their third party review. We are adding additional plantings or trees uh, up and around the existing truck unloading area that don't exist today. So there actually will be additional screenage that doesn't, isn't there today. I, I had posed this before and I guess I'll say it again. Has the DNR been notified or a letter requested or, or stated that, um, that we'll be taking this extra? DCR. DN, uh, D, DNR, Department of Natural Resources. Oh, it's, it's their property. It's DCR. Oh, DCR. Yeah. Oh, DCR. Thank you. That's what I thought. Oh, sorry. Okay. So the DCR, um, have they been notified? I think that would be a respectful thing to do. That if, if we are imposing upon a buffer that's required, that they know that we're within 75 feet. Well, I'll say the buffer is for earth removal purposes. Mm -hmm. So the work that's really occurring here is, um, and again, we're sort of in this gray area with the whole earth removal 
um, to begin with. Um, typically for a site plan, you wouldn't require an earth removal permit. So all the work that's occurring isn't actually the removal of earth for, the, you know, for selling um, gravel or, or some other earth product. It's really for the site development as it is. So we're maintaining the, the current buffer zones. I'll say that DCR has received notification of both the notice of intent as well as the stormwater permit and the earth removal permit. So they have been notified of the project. Okay. And you have a letter to that effect that, of yeah. that notification? I the letter, the 300 feet radius of the project, everyone gets notified. So they got um, a letter in the mail. Okay. Um, so I also read that there were other areas where, where, that, where there were another 25 yards taken away. Is that, was it only the front that was being affected? Or is there another sl slit that reduced down to 75? No, it's, it's really, it's just this uh, lot here. The Eversource's property extends further to the south here. Um, so it's, you know, the eastern and western lot lines. So at Wilson. And, and it affects yeah. no drainage onto their properties. It's all no. maintained on yours. No. Um, this infiltration basin is what has been designed to address the development, mm -hmm. and it actually discharges back this way into the site. So it does not go off-site. It has been designed to not impact off-site. Okay. And it's not adversely impacting the rest of your site either? Correct. Yeah, that, that's just an emergency overflow. For the most part, everything's going to be contained within the infiltration basin. Okay, so in the interest of time, um, we're going to have to continue. Um, are, are we good with 100 foot? We're going to check that one off. Um, hold on one second. Um, uh, I, I feel like that we're close to, to finishing this. And does the, the board have any um, objection to meeting at 7 at our next meeting to try and finish this up? Mm -hmm. We have very full agendas coming. It is the 14th. Okay. Is everybody still voting on this one? Uh, Not? Yes. yes. Okay. <coughs> so you'll lose one, but you have a full I, board. I, have a problem in here is four seven. So at seven? Four at seven. Seven thirty is even tough today. Um, but seven thirty is kind of like my dual line. Okay. Would I be over optimistic and say if there's any way to wrap it up tonight? Yep, because we have to leave at ten. Oh we have to leave at ten? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. I can make seven o'clock at fourteen. How many people do they need? We need a majority, so we need five. I'll be here at seven. If I'm a little bit late, Sorry. I can still participate in both. Yep. Like miss half hour. Or I hate to disenfranchise you, but if you can, totally, if you can get there, I just have, feel a sense of necessity to complete this. And if you don't get here in time, you can't vote, right? Georgia? I would. Say if you miss a substantial amount of, I mean, one or a couple of minutes, maybe, but <clears throat> any big discussion after that. Well, then I'm going to be opposed to having this at seven. Then this is pretty important. I agree. Um, be, before we vote on that, can I just uh, ask a question? Yep. The there were a couple of, there's still a couple of pending stormwater issues on beta's review? I think we've cleared all of those and we have a letter to that effect. I can, I can make sure we have that, but we have, um, they signed off on it. Okay, it was just 18 and 19. So if you could just double check that and make sure those are all resolved before yeah. we come back. I think so there we were can. like two conditions maybe that they had yeah. requested to be put on, but, but they were like, you know, provide the SWIP when it's finalized and. Are those not those there? No. I don't. I don't believe so. But I, I can show you which ones they are. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. All right. Um, so, do we have to extend deadlines? Um, yes. So, both of these expire on the thirty-first. The stormwater and the.
So are we, the board continuing to the 14th? Yeah, so that would still, oh, the 31st of December? Ah, yeah, there we go. Um, so would we be amenable to the um, 24th of January? So I'll entertain um, the 24th for the decisions. Decision sorry. Oh. Um, and a motion, and I'm sorry, Frank, but it, maybe it won't pass. But <laughs> to extend, Gary, to um, continue this hearing to the 14th at 7 p.m. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Thanks. Frank, I really am. Um, can we really quickly talk about um, the calendar for Georgia? Um, I have... Uh, I had proposals. Mm -hmm. 2019 calendar? Yeah. So May 27th is uh, Memorial Day. I note that annual town meeting is like the 6th, 7th, maybe 8th. We have a meeting on the 13th. Annual town election is the 20th. So I would propose we don't have that meeting. That's just my proposal. The 27th, which is Memorial Day. We'd have to find a place to put it. We have annual town meeting. We have a meeting on the 13th. We have annual town election on the 20th. We, feel we, meet on election we, day. we can meet on election day, but we'll have new board members. Oh, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Right? So it just feels who's, a little more complicated than it is. Who's expiring? Yeah. Whose term? Gary. Gary. Gary, what, how, many, how many years in your term? I'm just an appointed just one? position, so yeah. That's right. But, I, but was, there, was there more years in the term? No, it was a one well, year? Well, um, that's a good question. I, I don't know. The appointment is only until the next election. I have it written somewhere. I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> Carol's is definitely a one year. One year more. That, that spot is open for a five year vote. Brian's spot is open for a five year five vote. <laughs> Yours might be like to fill out like a two year term. I don't know. Yeah. So you have to rerun. Okay. So I'm rerunning, yes. Yes, awesome. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have next year. I've not made that decision yet, but oh. assuming if I rerun, I would have to rerun to stay on the board. Yes. There's a five year term that was. Friends, there is a, t a term ending in 2020 that Gary currently has, and a term oh. ending 2021, which is what Carol has. But she would, they would have to run again because you can run oh. mine. Yeah. Oh, yours is not just a one year. It isn't. All appointments are just. I know. Still I know. But I thought, I for some reason, I thought the seat you were taking was one was year. just a one year to, to the end. But no, Friends, the only five years spot. Fascinating. <laughs> I don't think, we're I don't think that's right. Out. Is that right? Oh, yeah, because it's nine. No, I, moved. I am not going to challenge Amy. All right. Okay. So then, so, so are we agreed that we'll have our one meeting on the 13th? Yes. Okay. And then for Columbus Day, which is the 14th of October, I propose that we meet on the 7th because that's two weeks after the meeting that we have on the 23rd of September. And two weeks before the next meeting, it works. So I propose that we change the 14th to the 7th. And then uh, the Veterans Day, 11-11, uh, um, it's exactly two weeks after and two weeks before other meetings. So we're in that situation of potentially not having that meeting again. Unless you want to meet two weeks in a row. No, November 25th is that the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's what I would do is I would just wait till. Yeah, I don't think we should meet two weeks what, in a row. See what happens. And, yeah. Okay, so that's my proposal is that we eliminate the 11th, November 11th, and we eliminate May 27th, and we change October 14th to October 7th. Sounds good. I'm a little hesitant on the November one because 
the, the next meeting is, isn't it Thanksgiving week? That could be hard to get a quorum as well. So when are our meetings? In 11 would be uh, 1825. It's the Monday of Thanksgiving week. Do you not all have children? I won't have more. I mean, I think I'll be here. I'll be here. I know I'll be here. I'll be here on Monday. Yeah. All right. I'll entertain a motion to so adjourn. Second. And we almost made it. I did better than Fran. <laughs> I just want to say kudos to the cameraman for Buckland Street when Phil was pointing it out. That was great. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. You got to make it by yourself, right? Can we motion to close?